Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the segment where you decide what we are going to talk about. And that is via the question and answer segment. And we have our first question for the day on the screen. Um, when you are reviewing the applications, besides academic background, um, what other documents would um, you know, make an application stand out and, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and maybe give an impression to the faculty team that this applicant is well suited to um, the Master of Arts in Art and Cultural Entrepreneurship program? Hi, um, thank you for the question. Uh, my name is Yufan and uh, I think um, for if you refer to the web page online with all of the application procedures and information, um, everything that is required uh, as far as the admissions committee is concerned uh, can be found on the web page. So there actually is no need for any additional further information um, uh, from the candidate's uh, end. However, if you really feel that there's anything in particular which you really wish to impress upon um, the committee, I think there is no um, restriction for you to submit it on the portal as well. Um, but just know that um, we will really focus most of our attention on the prescribed documents that we expect from the students, such as your transcript, your resume, um, your TOEFL or IELTS results. So those are the main things. But if there's any, really anything else that you really, really wish to submit, you think it will really help to uh, enhance your application, I think you can just go ahead and do so and we will just uh, keep that into consideration as well. Creativity begins with the examination of value of life. What is the best way to mitigate the conflict between ethics and creativity? So let me start with ethics. Ethics is really about uh, the conduct of the self and of the other, according to French uh, philosopher Michel Foucault, the cultivation of your self-conduct. And that is very similar to the civic humanism philosophy. We pick up things to learn to read and write and paint or now make make your TikTok videos that you want to make. Uh, we do all that because, you know, it nurtures our soul. It's part of our human spirit. You know, it's really this kind of intrinsic value around the kind of worth of the human, so what it's like to be human in a way. So I, I don't see there is a conflict okay in that kind of pure way that we think about civic humanism in the pure way we think about ethics um you know as part of um the practice of uh con the conduct of oneself right but if you think about ethics is what you know in the kind of is it right or wrong good or bad you know that way of thinking about ethics then uh, and then if you think about creativity, it's just to monetize IP, um, then obviously we need to be very critical uh, of that. You know, The monetization of it is where it gives that creative, the economic growth, okay? The billions and trillions of dollars that I've talked about, it creates 226.5 million jobs all over the world. And even in the last 20 months with COVID, right, when every single, just about every single CCI you think is closed because all the venues are closed, we can't go, right, because of social distancing. The world only, like, how, how many jobs were followed, just stopped for this duration? Only 10 million jobs, right? So another 60 million jobs are still going on in the back end, okay? So uh, COVID hasn't even crushed uh, the sector. Decim hasn't even decimated it, you know, kind of temporarily, even for this like 20 month uh, period, right? So if you think about um, the ethics of making money out of IP, okay, out of creative IP, then I think we need to um, stand broader, stand bigger. Then that's why uh, in this course, we will give you the critical skills. How do we critique this business model? So that's on a big scale I'm talking about. Then on a small scale, everybody's busy digitizing and putting things online. Okay, it's not about the putting things online part that you, you, you all know how to do that, okay? It's really how to put it online, monetize what you put online in such a way that you can really engage and attract the audience. This is really about audience development, okay? And this is really about digital interaction marketing. How do you hook the audience in that they can want to pay $5, $10, click and pay and then come and watch your interactive uh, show online, right? So that monetization part, even at a small scale for a small entrepreneurial artist, okay? We need to know how to do that. Otherwise you're giving away 
content uh, for free. And we shouldn't be giving away content for free. I've just spent 30 minutes telling you IP is king. Now, based on what was shared just now, the curriculum seems to be Eurocentric. Um, is there an opportunity to study the arts and culture of ASEAN countries as well as that of local cultures? Uh, yes, definitely. You know, what you just saw was just me giving a global uh, introduction uh, in 15 minutes, you know. But if you come to my course for the rest of 13 weeks, um, it'll all be Asian content, right? Especially uh, whatever local content, especially of our ASEAN countries. What we hope to do is to really teach you uh, foundational frameworks and concepts that are derived sometimes from the West, sometimes from Asia. Those are conceptual, foundational kind of tools. And content-wise, a lot of case studies will use very international case studies. And then two thirds of it will be regional, local case studies, so that then you can see the different scale, the different geopolitics and the comparative uh, kind of framework. That's in the content of the teaching. And then uh, when you come to us, we will expose you to local industries. So uh, we will bring uh, industry leaders to come to talk to class. We will teach our classes uh, in the cultural organizations uh, in Singapore. And you will do projects that are uh, work related that are tied to industry concerns. So the projects are very practical. You have to sit down, do a project, make a brief, but you work with an agency like a heritage organization, uh, like at an art gallery, and you work with them, okay, with our guidance. And then that is part of your um, assignments. By that, uh, you immerse yourself in the local sector. So if you're international, and especially if you're from the region, it's a good way to introduce yourself to immerse yourself to the local sector uh, in Singapore. But one of the things we've learned with remote teaching over the last one and a half years is it's so easy to invite a, a specialist speaker uh, from anywhere in the world when you just Zoom. So we will bring specialist lecturers from Indonesia, from Taiwan. They come as guest lecturers uh, many different ways, right? Like I've talked about uh, to internationalize uh, the content. Uh, using the, the syllabus, uh, using um, immersion uh, in the local uh, industry and projects and inviting industry people to come to talk, uh, both locally uh, and internationally. So this kind of Eurocentric uh, concern, uh, I spent my whole life, okay, trying to to challenge Eurocentric uh, thinking. That's been the bulk of my academic career, right? I wouldn't say the Eurocentric ideas are the foundation. I will teach you different ways of telling the story. And one of the ways of telling the story is the Eurocentric um, beginnings. And once you've mastered it, then it's easy for you to dismantle it. How are you going to dismantle it if you don't know the tool set, right? Kind of a black uh, feminist uh, scholar, Audrey Lott says, right? You got to use the master's tools to dismantle the master's house. If we're learning Eurocentric content in class, that's because I need you to know that, just so that you are equipped and you get have the skill set in order to then say, this is not for me and this is not for my country. And you can defend your position with conviction. Um, would students be able to get any internship opportunities during the course of study at this program? Uh, so yes, uh, you know, we've got an internship uh, component. So um, a few ways you can do internship. If you're Singaporean, then you can do paid internship. And uh, uh, but of course, you know, the, the art and culture sector, you know, they're not so much like your IT or the PR sector, which is full of a lot of money, right? So if you really want work experience, okay, in uh, the beautiful cultural uh, creative industries in Singapore, all our beautiful cultural infrastructure, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people just take unpaid internship. So internship is always there, okay? And then, you know, if you are kind of a, a foreign student, then you can do an unpaid internship, but or at the same time, uh, if you say you don't want to do that, you want to do a shorter um, uh, exposure, then the immersion will be part of a kind of final year uh, project where is uh, the final year project is called work integrated learning. So you are, you are attached to the work and then you go there and do a project with that particular uh, organization. So many different ways of thinking about internship and yes, we offer that. Okay, um, thank you Professor Audrey and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's Masterclass. 